Yo, 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 what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? It's Terrell Hall of Fame, D-Line, TBKC, and all that sweet, beautiful, wonderful shit. All right, let's talk about it. Um, The one testicle. And and, and uh, this is like the third time somebody's requested this video. Because they know I like Little Row, and there's been other controversies here later, I mean, lately that have, that have had this happen. Um... The one Tesco definitely is not a good thing. Now you have different variations of this uh, of, of this condition. The one condition is that the testicle stays, you know, uh, it, it never descends. It stays up in the dog. This condition is very, very uh, dangerous because it's a, a lot higher risk of the of the te uh, of cancer and that testicle basically going bad and causing the dog a lot of problems because it never dropped. Now, there's another condition to where the dog never develops a second testicle at all. And uh, that condition is actually a little bit better because, of course, you don't have to do the surgery to remove the other testicle. You know, now, um, the scientific part of what is said and, and the way most dog breeders do it is that you are not supposed to breed a dog that has this. Um, I know a lot of breeders just don't want to deal with it. I understand that little Ro had great success with his little one testicle, but it's something that you generally want to keep away from, and most breeders want them fixed. Uh, the reason why we did it so much with little Ro at the time is because little Ro was very, very, very unique to where we basically weighed the pros and the cons, and the pros and the cons were, of course, you can fix little Ro, but at the same time, if you fix little Ro, you lose all of the genetics that basically he were very unique to him. You know, little Roe is basically the you know the godfather of the of the American bully pocket, and at that time he was used to pretty much do everything that we needed to set this up. So we used him, and he was used a lot. And one unique thing about little Roe was is that little Roe never seem to throw that issue with the one testicle uh i think maybe i remember one other puppy that had it but you're talking about out of hundreds and hundreds of puppies he just didn't have it now of course at that time you know um dave didn't do the x-rays to find out and he and he never knows like he, he can say he knows he doesn't you know he never did it if, if little Ro had one that was still up in there or not, or if he was just born with uh, born with one. And um, the one thing I would tell you is we're at a point that we, it is still the same situation, weighing the pros and cons. If this dog is so unique and you feel that the dog just, you have to have this dog, this is one of the conditions that I've seen throughout the years. It doesn't affect the structure. It doesn't affect the overall health. It doesn't seem to be uh, passed on you know, genetically, and I'm, and I'm talking about through the puppies. It doesn't seem to affect the puppy's health. It, it just doesn't, you know. I've watched all little rolls all spring. I've watched a couple other studs who've had the same condition. It didn't affect their offspring uh, in a bad way, and, and it didn't seem to carry over. It didn't seem to become a recurring problem. So with that being said, can you use it? Yes. Should we stop using it? Yes. And I know that's a double answer, but I'm just being realistic with y'all. By the rules, any of these dogs with any of these ailments and any of these issues, uh, we should we should stop breeding it, you know, and avoid it by all costs. But in those rare situations where the dog is that special and you want to see if, if this issue is being passed along, it is what it is, you know. And um, I just know from personal experience that the issue doesn't seem to pass along. It doesn't seem to translate uh, through breedings or whatever. And most dogs come out very, very healthy. Like I say, Little Rose's offspring weren't known for serious issues and serious problems at all. And like I say, it's, it's several other dogs that I know that had that situation and they had great breeding careers with healthy puppies. So it'll always be an ongoing debate, but where the debate really stops at is that these type, you always wanna get away from abnormalities, just like King Tails. Although I'm not a fan of King Tails and it's something that you, you want to keep away from your program. I've run across a couple of dogs in my day that had King Tails that I, I was like, you know what? This is a pros versus cons thing. I think we can win with this and we will win with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, it, it, in breeding, you always have these situations to where 
maybe the rules are just a little bit different. You know what I mean? Maybe you can go, but it's always touchy because as we do these things with these rules and uh, we break the rules, so to speak, as far as it goes, someone is always willing to one up you and point back to it. Look, yeah, you bred a dog with a kink tail. Like, man, and you're breeding a damn dog with a heart murmur. It's a difference, you know? It's always it's always a difference. I mean, I think in people, we could, you know, start to draw lines of like, okay, you know, a, a person who might may be an amputee of their hand or, or have uh, some kind of um, disorder where they're born without one of their limbs, you know, are they really in worse condition than a person who's bo who's born with a heart that's failing? One situation makes quality of life a little bit different. The other situation ends your life. And this is what we talk about with flaws and issues and how we pick a balance. And the crazy part is that you have these people who just, they thrive on like everything is wrong. Oh, you did this. They'll pick the smallest thing. That dog was easty westy while they're breeding a dog that has debilitating hips. It's a difference. This is one of those issues that, and this is only my personal opinion, but from watching this breed and one, one particular dog that I watched was from another breed, it just doesn't seem to be one that transfers to the kids a lot. And I haven't ever noticed that it, there's a ton of uh, physical issues that come along with it. But it is a great conversation and I'm not saying which side is right, which side is wrong. Uh, because I agree a little bit with both sides. You know, I think we should be moving away from all flaws and all issues. But like I say, sometimes it's a shooting star and you just have to grab it and deal with the small consequences. But until next time, y'all, much love. God bless y'all. Peace.